That is awesome. And they're like that pretty much all the time. Jared and I had the honor to go visit them several months ago. And it's just super cool to see their love for Jesus, their love for each other, and their joy they have in life. Like, when you see, they, by many people's standards, they don't have much at all. And they are thrilled. They are happy with their life. They're happy with God. And it just, it makes me so incredibly thankful that we serve a God who takes care of us no matter where we are, no matter what our circumstances are. I mean, he's the God for everybody, for every season, for every situation. He gives us love, peace, joy. He's everything. The song that came to mind to me last night was my all in all. And that sums it up for me perfectly. Like, honestly, I was nervous about having to say something today. This is not a comfort zone for me, but I knew the Lord wanted me to. And I was like, Lord, what do you want me to say? I don't know what to say. But Jared reminded me that he's good. I mean, simply God is good. If you have nothing else to say, God is good. And I have several verses that are kind of favorites of mine that I kind of always come back to because it talks about the goodness of God and how he'll take care of you no matter what. Um, before I get there, although I did want to say, so both of these projects and for any, any, any other outreach things and stuff, if you want to continue to give, please do it from your heart. Like a little goes so far with them so far, but you can give online in the boxes, whatever, but just knowing that using us to help take care of other people, that's how God good is, how good God is. He'll take care of us through helping other people. And it has the verse that, uh, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we have to thank God. Thank him for your blessings. Thank him even when you don't feel like it, because sometimes when you, when you don't feel like praising God, that's when you need to. Put on a worship song. Like, just, if I ever have kind of an eh day, I turn on worship music and just start praising God. It turns right around. It's super cool. Like, he's really good like that, right? Uh, so, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding. I don't know why sometimes I'm at peace. The world's crazy, but we can have peace, like deep down peace that God is good. And the God, peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then another one, um, that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. The, the other one I actually found not too long ago, and it kind of hit me, because I've always had the peace that passes all understanding. I'm like, I just don't know why, but you know, you have peace, it's great. Well, then there's another one that says it passed this all understanding. Hang on, I gotta find it. <laughs> God is good. Mm. Well, I don't see it right now, but anyway. So then the other one I found, and I gotta do this in the New Living Translation. It says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. And it kind of goes back to putting on worship music. So a merry heart is like medicine. It does good for you. And if you need a little boost, worship God. Guess what? It'll just perk you right up. Uh, hang on. Uh, here we go. Okay. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, encompasses everything, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Not only does the peace pass knowledge, love can pass knowledge. And if you keep digging in, I mean, there were so many verses so many verses you could go back to to know where your strength, your help, everything comes from. But just God is good. I guess that's what I want to say today. That's who he is to me. It, it, he's everything. I, I love him. He takes care of me. He blesses me. God is good. Amen. 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 To get that goodness and that knowledge of 
how good he is and that peace of God deep within you as part of you it's powerful it's powerful um I'd like to have my brother share something um he told me he had a told me this morning he had a dream I think it was last night um the Friday night um and it, it, it pretty much is a good introduction to what I'm going to be talking about. So let's uh, go ahead. Good morning. I'm Hector. Anybody? <laughs> My dream Friday night. Dreaming I, I made this vase. Haven't thrown on the wheel in years and made this vase. Killed it. Put glaze on it. Then put it in the fire in a big fire kiln. And this kiln was huge with fire coming out of it just a large amount of fire I get the bricks cover up the ports to make sure it gets really hot in there <clears throat> bring the temperature down open it up and this vase beautiful multicolored vase glistening just like beautiful I'm like wow never did anything this before Saturday morning going to work praise and worshiping spirit of the Lord just came on me Tell my people, I'm bringing the fire. I'm bringing the fire. I'm going to burn everything away, and I'm going to make you a beautiful vessel. Prepare for that fire, for I am a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 29. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Prepare for that fire. Um, so, I'm just going to talk today about uh, some things that have been rolling around in me by kind of the, the, the theme of what, what I'm going to be talking about is, comes from, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is, if you're going to have a fire, you've got to put wood on it. And if God says the fire is coming, we've got to put some wood on it. This is one of those things, it's one of, it's a simple, right, it's a simple phrase. I mean, you could probably, a kindergarten could tell you that. You have a fire, you're going to have to have wood to understand, what, see what a fire is. Yet it's one of those things, um, it was probably... Uh, a year or more ago uh, at a prayer night that we were having when this word dropped down into the inside of me and just started rolling around and okay it's simple I understand it got it thinking about praying on the next thing and that thing's there again and it's it's just, it's there, and, and those things, they, they keep, they keep growing in you. They keep, they keep nagging at you. Anybody else get, have things like that? When, when, when God speaks, he's got a way of doing that. When you start seeing the things re, re, remind you and it keeps coming up, you know, that's a good chance you got God trying to speak to you, show you something. It's a whole nother message. God is good. But this, if you're going to have a fire, you got to put wood on it. It's a, it, it's, a it's a parable, really. It's a, uh, and it can be used as, it's like an a, analogy. Because God often speaks like that. God often, he, he spoke in parables. He told them stories, gave them things that, didn't necessarily rely, didn't necessarily mean um, literal translation. No, but that, that's the beautiful thing about a parable is that you can take and let God reveal that and tell you and explain, what does that mean for me? Now, what can I take and, and what's that mean for, for my life 
this time? What do you want me to do with it? And God, to, you know, to I'll say to me, he often speaks like that. Often, uh, I'll say short, simple things like that. You know, like you, uh, I'll get this word that rolls around in there and keeps marinating and keeps and then other things come up and other you'll see other uh, examples and similar things to it and, and you'll see and hear something that maybe is completely unrelated but yet then that word comes back to, to you at the same time like God is just because I suppose that's for, for us for me it's got to say it a few times, get it through the thick head, through, through our natural minds, through what we think. Keep saying it, keep telling it. But like that, that's why I like the words of that song where it says, he said it, I believe it. He said it, it is done. getting that, figuring out what that is, knowing that, understanding that he said it. God is speaking. God has got a plan. God has got something for you. He said it. And there's always things that that we're wanting, that we're, we're asking for, or we're, we're, we're living um, life and and we have our requests and our prayers um, that we're that we're seeking the, the Lord for that we're working on in our our life in our spiritual life in our physical life in our work life yeah. and to say that most of the time you don't know where those start and stop is a good thing. That's where we need to be. But it, it applies in, in a lot of different uh, a, a lot of different ways. Because God's hunger inside of a Christian it's always that way. Things, they, they say a lot of stuff is in God's kingdom it's upside down. And it's an interesting, if you look into, look into that and, and, and an understanding of that is kind of an interesting study. But basically, and when I say it's, it's upside down, it's, it's, and the more that you receive, the more that you eat of the word of God, the more that you take in, the hungrier you get. In the natural here in, in this earthly kingdom, that's not the way that it's supposed to be. That's, that's defying the logic of things. But in God's upside down, in God's way, in God's kingdom, this is, how he, this is how he does some of these things. The more that we ask, the more we receive, and the hungrier we are. Uh, the more, more of, we, we, we win by serving. Jesus triumphed by losing his life. These, these godly principles of how God works, what he does, what he has for us, how he wants to do things, are good studies, shall we say. And so, as we want certain things, as we're praying for certain things, we want to have, we want to have a fire. Okay? And you got to take and apply that. What does that mean? Again, like I said, it's, it's an analogy. What is this? How is this to you? We've got individual little things maybe on a small basis you know I, I want to uh, in our job I, I, want, I want to advance my job I want to get a raise in my job 
what, what can I do? How can I apply that to, that's, that's the fire that we're looking to have. I want to add some wood to that. What, what steps can I do? What can I, what can I do to show that I'm, that, that, to get them to, to know that I'm working for, I want this thing? What kind of wood can I add to that fire? What kind of things can I build on? What can I take a step out um, and do, make myself more valuable to them? And, and, and they'll uh, see that. And so, in a lot of these, these things in this analogy that, um, like I said, they, they apply to personal life, they can apply to your business, um, they can apply to your spiritual life. Um, and so, I pray that you would take and, and just, that it would marinate and come alive to you as well in these things what is what are those what are those things that those fires that you want what is the vision the stuff that you have and 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 wanting and asking stuff of the lord is is absolutely necessary right that you you but what if something I, i love the 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 idea, I don't remember where I heard this, but you know, what if something that you want is something that God needs? And the story of Hannah, where she wanted a baby. She was barren. She didn't have a child. She wanted a child. And she went after that. She was seeking that. She was asking the Lord. She was praying, interceding. She wanted a baby. And God needed a prophet in the land. God heard those prayers. He saw that wood she was putting on her fire. And he says, that right there, we can make something out of this. We're going to make a win-win out of this. God wins. Hannah got her baby. God got his prophet. And isn't that just like God to exceed our expectations, to take far and above what we can ask or think from a simple request from a simple prayer turn it over to God let him have it God I want to see I want there to be a fire in my life I want to see you move What can I say? You better be careful. It's this old saying of be careful what you ask for. You might get it. You ask God to move. Come on. When he moves, it may be far and above what you could ask or think because he is that good. He really is. What we're expecting, what we're believing for, what we're praying for, what we're adding wood to. God is able. He said it, I believe it. Come on, Jesus. Win, win. This is a kind of a if you're going to have a fire, you got to put wood on it. It's kind of a, you know, that the word is it's kind of an answer, kind of an encouragement kind of a thing. You know, where I, was, I said it was at a prayer night. Where you're praying and, and, and interceding and asking the Lord for things and seeing what the Lord has. And this 
word was kind of a an answer, kind of a encouragement, a uh, uh, something to do in the waiting. It, in the it's it's a to me and it was an encouragement that. God is working. God is doing something. If we're adding wood to something, we're building that fire. You're building the natural fire. And there's all kinds of ways and and methods that you can use for stacking, making the best teepee. If you want an actual real bonfire, don't ask me. Ask Kurt Myers. He can build you a mean fire, I tell you. Know just the right kindling, the fire starter, the logs, the kind of wood, how big, how much. But while you're building that thing, while you're laying that foundation, while you're adding those logs, th- there's not the fire right then, right? It takes a little bit of work. It takes something to add into it. It takes some doing. Life takes some living. Life takes some every day taking a step. Life takes some adding wood to have a fire. Kind of goes along with even though if you can't see it, God is working. You better believe it. He's doing something. Keep on adding wood. Keep on keeping on. Without that wood, there isn't a fire. This isn't about, we don't just sit back and wait for the big bang. Yes, God moves, works, God does miracles, God moves in suddenlies. But I tell you, if you're putting wood and you're building a fire, it's a sure fire way you're going to have a really nice fire. You're going to have something hot, something bright. You can't take and judge what you see, what God is doing. You can't judge what God is going to do in your life, in your family, by what you see right now. In this moment, in this second, we can say there's a lot of natural things we could look at and, and can tell you, well, here's, here's why. Look, you see that? That ain't worth that. It doesn't look like much to me. Yeah, again, in God's kingdom, what God is doing, if God says there's going to be a fire, I am bringing a fire. I believe it. I believe it. Just like without wood, There is no fire without prayers. There's no answers. Without seeking him, there is no relationship. Without a vision, there's no provision. Without Jesus, And the life that he sacrificed, we wouldn't have salvation. If you're going to have a fire, you've got to put wood on it. If you're going to do the works of Jesus, if you're going to do Jesus said these signs will follow them that believe. Not signs are and things come from they're 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 a result from an action from something we do. These signs will follow a believer. The fire follows the wood. If we are a believer, acting and doing, we'll see the signs. We've got to be intentional. We've got to make time, space, 
We need to get some of those things down into us. What is it that I'm wanting in my life? What, what of these signs that follow a believer do I want to see? We want to cherry pick, pick a couple of them, let's take part of it? Come on. All these signs. He didn't say one or this or the other. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. You know, where's the wood in that one? You've got to actually do something. He didn't just say the sick would just recover, just sitting there whining and complaining in their, in their beds. Some reason what he asked for, what he said, was he would partner with us. And that if we would lay hands on the sick and believe, as believers, they would recover. And all the other. What, what of those things, what kind of a fire are you looking for in your life? What do you believe in God for? What are the promises that you're holding on to? What are your dreams? What kind of a fire are you wanting to see in your life? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to, to be? And then go, okay, am I putting wood on that? Am I taking a step in that? Am I walking towards that? Am I doing something? Am I sending up a prayer that God can answer? Am I laying hands on the sick? Am I praying for people? Am I sh showing them Jesus? Teaching them salvation? So that God can take that and partner with that and show up and do something with it. Of, of our own, we are nothing. Yeah, sure, we've probably got some wood that we can put on. But you know what is a wood without the fire? Just an old dry stick. This is a tree that's already died, and it, it was, it's rotten, turning into nothing. Without God partnering, coming alongside of, and giving us that fire, I don't think we have much, much else. But we got to keep putting that wood on the thing. Keep adding to it. Keep doing. And, and, and I say wood again. Remember, it's a, it's a parable. It's a, it's a thing. How does it apply in the different areas? What stuff you're looking at? But are we adding wood? Wood, wood stacking. And a bucket of water. Some more wood. Some rotten, moldy stuff. That, is this... Is this how they, this really, are we really wanting an actual hot, bright fire? What kind of words, what kind of doubt, what kind of things are we adding, are we putting in there? That ain't going to burn. That's going to take the wood that you've got on there and you can still have a nice, beautiful, built, stacked fire. If it's in the middle of a pouring rainstorm, It's not going to be as good. You, you put a bunch of other soggy junk in the middle of that thing. It's just, you could have some wood. It's just sputtering, smoking, making a mess. And it ain't causing, it's not giving heat. It's not providing light. It's no good. Good only to be tossed out. It takes the little things. It takes working on it. it. takes putting some wood being consistent. The truth is, most people, some people, who want to be great or do great things, maybe have a big idea of something, they think they're going to do some great thing that their life is going to be something great for the Lord. A lot of people don't want they want to do the great things well we don't want to do the small things. 
Let them work on the stuff on the small scale. They want the Moses parting the Red Sea type of things. And I believe for it. Absolutely. I, it's, God said it. I believe it. But they don't want to go back to Egypt and face your past and, and work on some of those things. Get your life right. Get it in order. Get it under the direction of God. We want to be on a big, giant, sturdy boat in the middle of a flood. The rest of the world drowning and falling apart around us. We want that big, nice boat. We want it to be there. But how many people don't want to have to worry about getting splinters from sanding down all that wood, from building that ark, from putting that thing together? Looks a little bit too much like work. It's not quite what I'm called for. It's not what I feel led to do. Hmm. Better stop there. We want to see the lame man rise up and walk. God said it. It is true. How many people are willing to take that lame man on that bed, get him on the roof, cut a hole, lower him down to get to Jesus? Sometimes we got to be intentional. We've got to do some things. We've got to put some wood on that fire. Sometimes it takes some work. There was a saying that if serving is beneath you, then leading is beyond you. A lot of people will miss that because we don't want to have to think about the work involved. We don't want to have to think about the serving. But if you want to be great in God's kingdom, you must be a servant of all. It's what it says in the word. It's God's kingdom, his principles. What are we going to do with it? Throw it out or take and add some wood to our fire. What do you want me to do today, Lord? How can I help? What can I do? Give me some kindling. Give me some logs. Give me some, show me what I can put on. What can I do? Build a house for God. And God will build your house. You build for God. You're doing the work of the Lord. It, whatever that is in your area, in your life, for, for you, it's, it's different. It's something different and unique. And sometimes it doesn't look like much more than just a piece of kindling. But let me tell you, it is important. It is necessary. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. First, the kingdom of God. You know, I think I heard Lisa say this. Faith at work is faith that works. It's faith at work. Not just having faith and doing nothing with it. I wonder if you really have faith to believe. If you, you can say you've got the faith, if, if you don't do something with that. 
If you want to hole up in a safe place in your own house and go, I've got faith to move mountains, that the sick will be healed, the lame will walk, but you're probably not going to see it. Till you take your faith and put it at work, take it out of that hope chest, and do something with it. Take some wood, put it on that fire. Now, maybe it's something more than just a piece of wood. Now, maybe it's something that God can use. Now, there's something that God can bring the fire and light up. Having faith, it looks a little too much like work for a lot of people. It can take and believe, understand, or know that I'm, I'll go with that principle, the wording of I've got the faith, I've got these things. Are we putting it into action, into work in our life? Are we doing something with it? Because acting on the word of God, acting with what God says, with his, the faith that he's given, given every man the measure of faith, taken doing something with that is what's important. What you speak is what you're going to get. We've got to be speaking these things. We've got to be praying. We've got to be seeking. We've got to be doing. Just like in the song that they sang earlier today about the story of Ezekiel and in the valley of dry bones. When God said to prophesy to those bones, speak, say it out, do something, put some wood out there, And here comes the breath of God. Blowing on dry bones that were just littering a valley, making a mess. Nobody even had time to bury these things. They were of no use. They had passed away in the battle. Something. They were just, they were gone. They were rotting. They were returning to the dirt again. Yeah, that's what it looked like. That's what it looked like. It just looked like a pile of kindling. God saw a fire there. God saw something he can use. God said, speak. Prophesy. Come on, let it come out of your mouth. You said it. I believe it. Prophesy, O son of man, to those bones. And that's exactly what he did. And here comes the breath of God. Here comes muscles and flesh adding on to that. Here comes an army for God. Here's an army. Rise up. God is going to have a fire. Back in the beginning, the Lord gave specific instructions to the priests about building an altar. They had a special place, the temple and the tabernacle, and the, it's a marvelous study of a foreshadowing of all kinds of things. It's a whole series of messages there but they had they would lay the wood and the specific people they put the told them put this make the fire 
make the lay the wood on the altar, keep that fire going, keep adding the wood to it. And they would bring the sacrifices for the Lord. In the New Testament, God is saying in Romans 12.1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is just your reasonable service. That's the sacrifice that he's looking for on, our, on the altar that he once brought to that wood. Added to that, he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Which is what? Surrender. Lord, you do. You use me how you want to. You do what you want to. You take, use this pile of bones for what you want it to be. God, if you say that you're going to put muscles, that you're going to breathe your breath, and that you're going to raise up an army, hallelujah. Come on. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Because without him, we're just a pile of bones. Our bodies will be in a valley somewhere, dry bones, not worth much, unless God says, what do you ask him, son of man, do you, you, you think that that's possible? You, you, can these bones live? He was a smart man there, and God's asking him that. You know, a pile of bones from everything that I've seen. I've never seen a pile of dry bones living. He was smart enough to know, Lord, you know. What you say, Lord, I believe it. What you say, Lord, I'll take it. Come on, what do you want? He said, prophesy. Come on, shut up, yeah. Dry bones will live. Whew. <sighs> Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and Gentiles shall come to the light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. God said his light's coming. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. There aren't dry bones. God is, he's there. He said it's upon thee. Gross darkness will cover the earth. But he said, you're going to be a light. Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Come on, out of dry bones, out of nothing, out of this? Whew. Lord, you said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. Hmm. Some of us might be refusing to accept what was taken away, what has changed. It causes us to lose our ability 
to expect and believe what God is going to do next. Maybe not comfortable to think about, to accept, to see if that applies to us. I must read it one more time for myself. We may be refusing to accept what was taken away, what has changed. So we've lost our ability to expect what God is going to do next. Again, we're looking at, it's easy to look at a pile of dry bones and go, the life has gone out of them. There is nothing. Yeah, they, they used to be. Sure, there it used to be an army. There used to be something there. Yeah, they didn't amount to much. Whatever something, whatever happened. We don't know what that was. In our own lives, in what we see, it's dry bones. It's not happening. Don't let the dry bones cause you to lose your ability to expect what God is going to do next. You know, those vultures that were probably sitting around, they just picked the carcasses clean. That sun was there baking those bones drying them out. Nothing there could have imagined what was coming next when the breath of God showed up and there was an army exceedingly great. We need to take And apply and work on our own lives individually. Not thinking about what could have been, should have been, what should be, what the church, who is the church? Us. Church isn't a building, the church isn't a place, the the church. We are the church of God. He said we are this temple. He would dwell in us. Not in a building, in a place, in a field. No. But we can't just wait for the church. The church can't just wait for the church to preach the word that we want to hear. To give us what we want. We're looking in all the wrong places. We need to be independent, yet in a relationship with God the Father, ourselves, we need to be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. We, I, need to mentor, show, be an example, inspire, motivate, practice, live it out, and instruct with the knowledge necessary to overcome and to be an overcomer. Me. Me. I'll take the responsibility for that. Me. I can't... It's not... Something because I was saved, because I asked Jesus to come into my heart, because I did some whatever. We want to apply doctrines to apply to it because I got dunked in waters. Me. What am I going to take responsibility for? What kind of wood am I putting on my fire? 
I need to do these things. There's a dying world out there. I need to reach them. God, give us the wisdom and the strength. They need to hear the gospel. The simple gospel. That's a whole nother message as well. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Our part, accept that invitation. That's it. The simple gospel, he said, he would reveal it to babes. Simple. Simple. Simple applies to healing and deliverance as well. Jesus died that we would be healed. He said it. I believe it. Anything else? Anything remaining? Anything otherwise? Is illegal. God's word is the law. These things operating illegally, it's up to somebody to tell them to go. Somebody enforce the law. Somebody say, My God is greater. It's not going to happen. Have compassion for mankind. Says in the word that Jesus had compassion on them and healed them all. That's what it said that he that that he did. Again, for Jesus, he went out there and did something. He had to put some action. He had to take some wood. For there to be a fire. He had to do some action for there to be the reaction. But Jesus had compassion on them and healed them all. Boy, there is a lot in that. That's just that's the that's just how it explains it in several places in the word. Like that's that's all that they, they give, that's what they tell you. He had compassion and he and, and he healed them all. It was that easy. Jesus. Because the devil's not interested. He's not really interested in, 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 in your sickness, in what the different things, the, the names, the types, what the world comes up with and puts names and labels and stuff on it. God wants, the, 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 when the devil comes at you with these things, he just wants, he wants your praise. He wants your peace. He wants that God that's inside of you to have no place. He wants to be in there. That's why it's illegal. That's why sickness, disease, and torment has no place. Because our God is greater. Our God is what is living on the inside. There's no room. God said that he would confirm his word, confirm the word with signs following. Are we speaking his word? Are we putting it out there so that there are the signs following? There's so many religion seems to make a seems to make a doctrine seems to make it's, there's so many there's so many 
things out there that would we'll try and confuse so many paths, so many rabbit trails people have run down and made so many, made mountains out of mole hills and uh, man's understanding and man's, uh, our brains are too big for our own good in too many cases. The simple gospel, right? It's not that complicated. We need to get our minds out of the way, get it figured out in our minds that the truth is that he is for you. He's not against you. He is for you. He wants the best for you. He has got a vision for a fire bigger and brighter than you can imagine with your life. He has got a vision and a plan for an army bigger and greater, exceedingly great for those dry bones. God said it. I believe it. All we need to do is add a little wood. Take a step. Walk in the steps of Jesus. Walk that out. God, what do you have? What is your plan? What kind of a fire, Lord, are you wanting to build? What kind of a plan do you have? How big, what is this thing going to be like as I'm adding wood, as I'm piling it on, as I'm doing what I know to do in today with my steps today, right now? God, we're trusting you that you are bringing the fire to this pile of wood that we're adding up, we're building up. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's not me anyways. It's God inside me is greater and more than able. And I pray that God would continue to show you individually what it is, how, and, and even provide you the, the, the wood and the provisions and the things that you can take and add on and do. But let me encourage you, if you've got the opportunity, the chance, if you're looking to do something for the Lord, do it. Keep adding on. Keep doing. There's some things that look a little bit more like serving, that look a little bit more like work than being the... What are, what are, what are we going to do? How, how am I... If, if there's going to be a great army rising up, do I have the ability to make, make put sinews and muscles and flesh into bodies and to drive it. No. But God said, do you believe it can be done? Son of man, what do you say? I say, you say it, Lord. I believe it. And it is done. It is done. Claim it in your life. Walk it out. Each and every day, you say it, Lord. I believe it, and it shall be done. God is going to have a fire. Oh. I love God is just like that. It taken, it just keeps adding the stuff keeps showing you more examples, more ways. What? Hmm. There's so much to God. Yet, it's so simple. Trust 
in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. All right, Lord. Here we go. Here's a step. It's all I got. Here's a bag of bones. Come on. Make an army exceeding great beyond what we could ask or think. Man, God is good. God is good. That's where I'm going to quit for today. Let me just close it out with prayer. Lord, Lord, you said it, and I believe it. I don't have to strive, make these things up, come up with what this final plan is, with what you have, Lord, what you're doing. I don't have to dream up this great and exceeding, exceedingly great army that you're going to rise up. My God, I got to just partner with you. If you said it, I believe it. It is done. Lord, I pray that you will open our spiritual eyes, open our heart, open our minds that we may understand in an even greater way what you have for each and every one of us. For each and every one of us, Lord. How simple, how you want to have communion, you want to have relationship, you want to partner with us for the things that you want to see in our lives. Oh God, We bring ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Lord, I'm going to continue taking a step, adding wood, doing what I know to do, Father. And I pray that each and every day you will reveal more to me as to what that is. What you want, Lord, how you want to use what you want to do in this earth, come on, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. I thank you, Lord. Strengthen each and every one. Give them, Lord. Give them provision. Help them in every way, whatever they need, Lord. Because you said you would. You said you are our all in all. Thank you, Lord, for the peace of God, for the joy, the peace that passes all understanding. Thank you. Help us, Lord. Show us what we can do. Speak. We are your servants. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus' name. If anybody wants to know more about that Jesus, we'd be happy to talk with you, share with you. If anybody wants prayer, if anybody wants someone to come alongside you, believe, 
and trust in the God that said he died on the cross, he shed his blood for our sickness, for our disease. And all we had to do was believe and the, these signs would follow them that believe. We can pray for you. We believe we'll come alongside you, partner with, our, join faith together and let God have his way and let God move and let God do something great.